we have to we have to cover all of our bases, and that's what we did by by reading you those rights. So we need to know. I mean, does that make sense? Like, I, I don't. I know you've been a police officer for a while now, so you've got you understand, you know how 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 everything works, mm -hmm. and so I've got to rule you out as a suspect. And if I can't, you know, if I can't do that, then we're at a standstill. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So where what happened today? Where like can you walk me through your day about what happened today? I have to remain silent. Okay. On that. Okay. Are so you're you telling. Right. Okay, so you're telling me that you did do something today that was that was wrong. Then <laughs> is that what, I mean? Is that what I'm getting at? I mean, I'm just if, okay. So you're you just don't want to talk to me because well, of what I reason? I don't understand what you know, uh, they snatched me up out there and didn't, nobody told me anything. I don't understand. Okay. What? Why I couldn't be told some? What's going on? And and uh, okay. So did you? I guess my question is this. Knowing what I just told you, okay, I guess if it was me and I was, you know, if I was in your position, I'd be like, hey, James, I did this, I was at, or Grant, I did this, I was at, you know, here, 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 and here, and I would just be done with it, and that way you can get out of here. But at this point, like, I can't clear you from this because you could still be, potentially be a suspect. Does that make sense? Like, am I? I don't know if I'm not explaining it right or, or what is yeah, going on here. It fine. I just okay. have to, once the once the rights have been read, I have to. Uh, it says I have the right to be silent. 48-year-old Grant Hardin was a loving family man, police officer, police chief, county constable, and corrections officer. But on February 23, 2017, that all changed. James Appleton was found in his truck dead, and Grant was the main and only suspect. The death of James Appleton would later bring light to a cold case file that Grant was also involved in 20 years before. Grant was born on December 6, 1968 and grew up in Garfield, Arkansas. After graduating from high school in 1987, Grant applied for and was accepted into the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. While there, he was studying mechanical engineering. After just two years of attending the University of Arkansas, he decided to leave college to pursue his dream job in law enforcement. In 1990, Grant attended and graduated from the Arkansas Law Enforcement Training Academy. Upon graduating that year, in August, Grant started his first job as a police officer, and he would work there for a total of nine years, but after his probationary period was up, he was fired for not being able to meet all the expectations that were required of him. Grant decided he wasn't going to let his dream job slip away just like that. He applied to be a patrolman at the Huntsville City Police Department. When they asked why he was previously fired, he lied and told them he had discovered a couple of corrupt police officers who were supposedly confiscating drugs and alcohol for personal use. Grant was employed for eight months before he decided to resign. Grant's next job was in late 1992. This time, he applied to be a part-time patrolman at Eureka Spring City. Once again, when he was asked about his reasoning for leaving, he lied and told them the reason he resigned was that the department expected him to treat people unfairly, and he just couldn't do that because he wasn't that kind of person. After working here for a while, he was offered a full-time job position at Eureka Spring City in 1994. While working here a year later, Grant met Linda, his wife, and they were automatically attracted to each other. They dated for about a year until they finally decided to get married, and eventually they had a baby girl. In 1996, Eureka Springs City caught Hardin making a false police report, so he once again resigned and decided it was time to take a break from law enforcement jobs. After 13 years, Grant once again decided he wanted to work with law enforcement, so he applied to be a constable in 2009, and in just five years, he was elected to become deputy sheriff for the Benton County Sheriff's Department. Despite his past job history with law enforcement, in 2016, he officially became the chief of police, but once again, he resigned four months after to focus more on his family. In the small town of Gateway, Arkansas, where Grant lives, everyone knows everyone. The issue with this is that not everyone will always get along. James Appleton was the one with whom Grant didn't get along with. No one quite knows the reason why, but if you were to ask anyone from Gateway, Grant and James just always seem to bump heads. James Appleton was 59 years old. He had a wife, son, two daughters, and four siblings. 
James was a supervisor at Emerson Electric for almost 30 years. He eventually decided it was time to switch job paths and became a carpenter, and then worked for the city of Gateway. When he wasn't working, you could find him fishing, doing woodwork, or at his church, where he was a dedicated member. On Thursday, February 23rd, James was driving his truck around town when his brother-in-law called his phone. James then pulled over on the side of the road so he could talk for a couple of minutes. At this time, Grant was also out driving when he saw James's truck pulled over on the side of the road. Grant looked up and saw other vehicles behind him, so he waved for them to go around. As the last vehicle was passing by, Grant got out of his vehicle, walked over to James's truck, held up a gun, and shot him in the face. Grant immediately got back in his vehicle and took off back to his house. What Grant hadn't realized was that the very last car that drove around his car wasn't far away when they heard a loud boom. The witness quickly made a U-turn just in time to see Grant speeding off in his vehicle. As the witnesses got closer, they saw that James was dead in his truck from a gunshot wound. The witness quickly called 911 and told the cops what Grant had done to James. As the cops arrived on the scene, they immediately started looking for evidence and sent out instructions to get roadblocks set up around Grant's house. Upon arriving back home, Grant told his wife and daughter they were going out for dinner. But during dinner, Grant's wife Linda and daughter both quickly realize how strange he is acting. Linda asks multiple times what was wrong, but Grant only responded by saying he loved her very much and not to worry because God would always take care of her. After dinner, Grant was not sure if he would get away with the murder he just committed, but decided it was time to head home because he had to be at work soon. As the Hardin family was getting close to home, they were stopped by the police blockades. Police arrested Grant and took him down to the station for questioning. After cops read Grant his Miranda rights, they tried multiple times asking him what happened earlier that day, but he proceeded to tell them that he would like to invoke his Fifth Amendment and remain silent because he didn't understand why he was there. Since Grant chose not to talk, the detectives left the room. As time passed on, Grant realized it was getting late and needed to leave because his job was starting soon. Detective Chamberlain then came back in and asked Grant if he was ready to talk and answer some questions. Grant responded by saying he was ready to go because he had to get ready for work. Chamberlain tells Grant that he has not been cleared as a suspect so he can't leave, then once again leaves the room. Detective Cordero returns, gives him a drink, and casually chats with him in hopes that he'll become more comfortable and open up to her. After some small chat between the two, Hardin starts to cooperate little by little, answering more of Cordero's easier questions about his day, such as, what time did y'all go to dinner? Where did y'all go to eat dinner? Were you able to get everything done today besides feeding your chickens and laying out seed? What clothes did you have on today? What color? Did you ever go back outside? Did you go anywhere today? Did you ever leave the house? When you went back inside, did you have some, like, was there time in between you guys leaving, or did you leave pretty quick? But Grant, a former cop, knew that he must watch what he said and keep his answers short, because anything he said, the detectives could use against him. Detective Cordero realizes Grant is interested in talking a lot about his chickens, so she allows this, knowing this is a subject he's comfortable with, and hopefully will continue to open up more about his day. When you were outside today, did you notice anything different or weird going on? Or hear anything that was abnormal? No. While you were outside laying the sea and stuff like that? No. no? Everything's good. Did you run into anybody? Anybody stop by, say hi? Nothing? No? Okay. All right. Well, don't you cry. Did you see anybody on the road? Anything like that? It'd be so nice, I didn't know if maybe anybody was out and about. Did you see any other neighbors? What are you getting at? No, I'm serious. I'm just asking. I'm just oh, a small no, talk. Not that I know of. After being asked questions regarding if he saw anything strange outside or what time he and his family went to dinner, he knows he may be giving away too many details about the time surrounding the murder and isn't sure if any witnesses saw him. If cops can take what little bit he has said, along with what his wife and daughter have said, they can piece that all together. Well, let me go check on their process. I'll come chit chat more. I don't know if that's the stuff. Are you okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. All right, I'll be right back. Just I apologize ahead of time that, hey, that no. I do this silent. I, no, I enjoy I mean, talking to it. Hey, yeah, it's okay. I like to remain silent. You don't have to explain it. I get it. I enjoy talking, so I'll be back. 
Detective Cordero realizes she may have frightened Grant with some of the questions she's been asking. She now allows him to talk about unimportant things like medicine, how well his daughter drives, and what kind of vehicle she wants. Though these things are unimportant, she knows she can use these topics to switch the conversation back to asking about the time frame of his day, along with the roadblock without him realizing it. So did you drive tonight? Or did your daughter drive? I know she mentioned that she just got her driver's license. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Have we got her a car yet? Yeah. No. Has she been begging for one yet? Not really. Uh, she wants a truck. <laughs> hey, that girl. Mm -hmm. Doing something right. If she wants a truck. So what happened when y'all were on your way home tonight? Y'all just ran into the roadblock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wasn't, <clears throat> I wasn't there when that part happened. Mm. They just, what'd they do? When you guys ran into him? Well, the guy stopped us in and, and then he uh, wanted us to go down to Jones Trader Park Road. And I said, well, I live two houses down here on the right. He said, well, let me ask the boss about that. Oh. He went and got to the radio for a while or something and then, <laughs> I said, what's your name? I said, Grant Harden. And uh, he said, can you step out of the car? And and then uh, they put me in handcuffs and put me in the back of that one car. Oh, the, the mm -hmm. canine one you were talking about? Yeah. And then Brad come got me and put me in the other car. And Way more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. Right. Well, uh, he is. He's a really good guy. He's a good cop. I've learned a lot from him. <clears throat> were you were y'all in your? Uh, is it your wife's car, mm -hmm. the one that it sh that she was driving? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that? Wait. Huh? I'm gonna ask you, please forgive me. No, you're fine. But I'm just gonna have to stick back to my. Yeah, no, anyhow, I'm thing. just chit chatting. I know you so. are. You're fine. If you feel and comfortable, I appreciate you. Yeah, if you feel comfortable, you don't have to say anything. But. But I, I just ain't being rude, but I'm no, just gonna be quiet. Rude. Yeah, no. Hey, just so chatting. I get it. I really do. Grant has now asked for forgiveness. Though he may be in shock, the reality of what he has done may be sinking in as guilt. But as Detective Cordero continues asking questions, he once again invokes the right to be silent. Do you have any, uh, any cool cars other than a Honda Civic? Forgive me again. I'm just, I'm just. Oh no, you're fine. I'm just curious. <laughs> you're good to talk to. Like, I didn't know I she. I got a headache and, uh, oh, and I'm. Can you right. see if I can I'm, find you something? No, that's all right. I'm sure I can. We got a pharmacy around here somewhere. I, I'm just wondering what's going on. You know, if I'm going to be charged with something or. Well, did something happen today? Know? That's what I wanted to know. I have a dentist. Well, something I'm, did happen I'm today. Why you tell me? I'm silent. All right. <laughs> I know, I know. I need it. I'd rather talk about cars than anything. I know, me too. <laughs> well, I'd rather talk about it. So any cool cars other than a Honda Civic? Anything fancy? I'm just, um, what do you call it? The paper again. Yeah. Oh, that's great. We don't want to talk about cars. We can talk about something else. Mm -hmm. that make no, sense? No, I just don't want to. I'm just going to Do you want me to go away? No, you're fine. Well, I'm a talker. You so. talk. You talk. I talk. Hey, you talk then. It's not fun to talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. you got to enjoy your conversation I with someone. I, I just feel... No, I get it. No. I get it. If it makes you uncomfortable, we don't have to talk about that. Well, I just feel... Uh, yeah, I'm comfortable or whatever yeah. being here. No, I get it. I get it. I'm just trying. And I to want to apologize, but I'm just going to stick to my rights. Why are you here? Silent. Right. I guess that's the main question. Why I, are you here? Why am I here? Do you have any idea? Why am I here? Yeah. Do you have any idea why you would be here? When you guys tell me, I will. Nobody's told me anything when I sat in that police car for a long time. Deputy's car for a long time. Yeah. Nobody told me anything. I just didn't know. Well, sometimes you gotta wonder if somebody has to tell you first. 
Detective Cordero asks Grant if something happened today, but he continues to act like he has no idea what she is talking about. Grant is now getting frustrated due to a headache and because no one will give him the answer as to why the cops arrested him. Like if you know something, I'll help. But the reason y'all are asking, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of, kind of the way you have to look at it sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. That's why, you know, when Detective Chamberlain came in here, he wanted to talk to you about if you had, what you had done today, or if you had seen something happen, or witnessed something happen, or, you know, like you said, some, something happened today. It was something really bad. And if you witnessed it, then it's something we need to talk about. Because people witnessed you. So, but I want to give you the chance to talk. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather hear your side of the story versus anything else. To me, everybody deserves that, right? Especially, you're a good, you're a good guy. You're a good person. So, I don't know. I feel like everybody should have that chance to tell their side, especially if something bad happened. I would want somebody to give me that chance. <coughs> I just want to know what got you to this point. I mean, I worked with you. So, like, you helped me, you know? Had my back in a, in a situation, so it would be nice to understand from you, but from your viewpoint, why yeah. you'd be here, what happened, or did you see something happen, or were you put in a situation, kind of walk me through it. But that's your choice, right? Everybody has a choice. You have to be the one willing to put it out there. I don't know. I feel like you've done this profession long enough. You know how things go. You're a good guy. You're not a drug dealer. <laughs> You're not a child molester. You're not, you know, anything like what you've dealt with, what I've dealt with. But I think today you could have, you've dealt with a bad situation. I just want to know what happened. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna wanna know, you know? What answers, especially your family. Mm -hmm. I would. Well, I do. I wanna help you. That's the bad part. I wanna help you figure it out. All I can do is sit here and say that I'll listen, work it out with you, figure it out together. But. You have to be willing to talk to me about it. I'm a pretty real person. <laughs> pretty straightforward. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it's uncomfortable and nerve wracking sitting in a room by yourself with people that you've worked with in the past, knowing the situation. But, like I said, I wasn't there. You're the only one who can kind of fill in the blanks at this point. Am I right? You don't have to talk to me, but I'm willing to listen. I know you are. We all make mistakes. We all get put in positions. We're all human. We all react a certain way. We all have emotions. Sometimes we overreact. Sometimes we're put in situations we don't want to be put in. Mm -hmm. Like I'd rather, you know, have met you again outside having coffee <laughs> instead of seeing you, you for the second time in here. But, I don't know. I think you just made a mistake today. Or somebody made a mistake today. And I think you know what happened. I just want you to help me understand it. I think you know what I'm talking about. 
And I think, you know, that some things are going to come out. And I want to be able to stand on your side and say, hey, this is what happened. And he was up front. He was honest. And he explained it. <laughs> and he cooperated. Does he need a lawyer? Who? The guy you're talking about. Me. I think... Honestly, I think you're the only one who can make that call. But I think you're an honest man. I think you've been an honest man. Mm -hmm. I think. Well, that's the best. I'm not just going to be quiet. You can be quiet. I'll keep talking. No, I'm serious, though. I think you're an honest man. I think you've done a lot of good in your life. All you've done is spent your life helping others, just like I have. Now you've had something happen, and you're trying to figure it out, but how are you supposed to figure it out on your own? Like, why not let me help you figure it out? Help me understand what happened today, so I can help you. Before everything else comes out, so there's an explanation instead of it just looking bad. Because I don't want you to be portrayed like this horrible monster. If you made a mistake, you made a mistake. You're no different than anybody else. Everybody's human. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I've made plenty of mistakes in my life. Detective Cordero tells Grant she wants to listen to his side of the story so she can help him figure things out because he's helped her in the past, but he still won't crack. I'm honestly here to help you. I want you to understand that. I wouldn't spend my time in here with you if I didn't honestly think that you were a good person and that something happened today that needs to be explained. Did you make a mistake today? You don't have to verbally answer. If you don't want to. Would you want your daughter to admit if she made a mistake? Mm-hmm. Because you're a good man and that's how you raised your daughter. My dad would expect me to do the same thing. Because he was raised the same way. And I honestly want to be there. <laughs> help your daughter understand. After you help me understand. I honestly feel like you want to talk to me <laughs> and explain it. How long will you be here? Detective Cordero has one more attempt at getting Grant to confess. She tells him a confession will save his daughter a lot of pain in the future. But Grant is smart and knows that she will have pain either way because he will be in jail. Are you guys going to arrest me for something? I don't know. Can't answer that. Oh. Did something happen today? How long can you detain me? Well, it's an ongoing investigation. What does that mean? It means they're still looking into everything. Oh. And honestly... Well, again, I apologize, but I'm just going to close my eyes. No, I get it. It's okay. <clears throat> like I said, I'm just trying to figure out the holes, you know? Detective Cordero leaves the room to get a glass of water and take a walk so she can try and get woken up because it's late. Listen, Grant, I think you were well aware of what happened today. I think you know why I'm here. You're a smart guy. <laughs> I think you know what, you, what happened today. And I just really want to talk and understand so I can get on your level and figure out what the next step is going to be. And I feel like you are the type of man who wants to, who can understand that. Since detectives have not told Grant any more about why he is being interrogated, he once again decides to remain silent and not answer any questions. Instead, he is also tired and wants to rest his eyes. Cordero, 
I like you, I like this fella that was a detective here, and I don't think y'all don't care about any of that, but, and stuff, and I just don't know how to, how to, uh, I'm mean, having had this happen before, uh, mm -hmm. being brought in and interrogated for something, so, I don't, mm -hmm. I know you don't care, but I just don't know how to, how to, I think how to be silent. I think. So, sitting over here looking like a jerk. No, you're not. That, honestly, you are far from that. You're very polite. Well, I, I'm just going to continue think, to rest my eyes and, and... Don't you know why you're here? I appreciate you guys and I'm just going to... Well, I appreciate you being polite. It's kind of a nice alternative to what I've dealt with before. <laughs> Kind of nice to talk to you too. Makes time go by. Do you want to talk to me? Can I get a lawyer? Yeah. I don't feel like I need to. It's up to you. But you can obviously it. something's going on and I need one. It's up to you. I just want to hear your side of it. I want to get a lawyer. Give you advice on that. You know that. Grant decides he's ready for a lawyer, which ended the police interrogation. He was then placed in handcuffs and taken into custody for capital murder. When Grant went to trial, he pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 30 years in prison with eligibility for parole after 21 years. Grant never would give detectives a clear explanation as to why he shot James. The murder shocked the whole town. James was a man everyone knew. He would always say hi to everyone. The death of James Appleton will forever remain a mystery. Since Grant pleaded guilty, he needed to submit his DNA so it could be added to the CODIS database. After his DNA was submitted, he was linked to a rape he had committed 20 years before. In Rogers, Arkansas, in 1997, 27-year-old Amy Harrison, an elementary school teacher, decided to go into work that Sunday morning at Frank Tillery Elementary School. Amy wanted to go in so she could get a head start on her lesson plans for that upcoming week. Amy had always loved the school and never felt uncomfortable, so she figured this would be like any other day she went on her day off. After working for an hour, she took a quick break and went to the teacher's lounge and restroom. As she came out of the restroom, a man with glasses, a gun, and a beanie confronted her and said to not turn around, look towards him, or scream. He suddenly pushed her into the closet classroom near them, where he then brutally forced himself on her. Amy was so scared and could only think she just wanted to go home. Before the man left, he grabbed her underwear and turned to ask her, do you recognize my voice? Amy said no. Once the man had finally left, Amy called 911. At this time, Amy's husband was a police officer, so as soon as the call came in, he and the police force arrived very quickly. Upon arriving, they collected a full description of the man and some of her clothing that had the man's DNA left on it. But what DNA was left behind wasn't enough to provide police with the answer to the big question. Who was this man who'd hurt Amy? So the case went cold for a total of 20 years until the day Grant was arrested and had his fingerprints and DNA put into the CODIS system. After the attack, Amy's life went downhill. She had trouble sleeping, had to take time off work, was scared to leave her house, and her marriage was having problems to the point she and her husband got a divorce. Detective Hayes Minor was the main one on Amy's case. He'd never given up trying to find the man who hurt her. Grant was charged with 30 years for the murder of James Appleton. He then pleaded guilty to the rape of Amy Harrison and was sentenced to 50 more years. Both sentences run concurrently, which means he only has to serve 35 years and then can be eligible for parole. He now serves his time at the Security Central Unit in Calico Rock, Arkansas.